Now we're going to discuss the status of seagrass globally and the conservation of seagrasses. There are significant threats to seagrass ecosystems. They're being lost at a very high rate over the globe. Now this, this picture that you can see below here shows in red over time the amount of seagrass that's being lost in the sites where it's being monitored. And you can see that this has basically increased exponentially uh, over the last decades. On the top in green are sites where there's been uh, observed increases in seagrass and you can see that they are much smaller than the decreases that have been observed. So the decreases are mainly due to reduced water quality and that means increases in turbidity. And the increases in turbidity are largely the result of inputs from the land. So sediments and nutrients and other pollutants that basically reduce the light that can get to the sea bottom where the sea grasses are growing. Now the sediments reduce the light level that gets to the benthos, but nutrients also can reduce light. And they do this by allowing the growth of algae on the surface of the seagrass leaves. So they increase the abundance of those epiphytes that we saw in previous slides. And they also enhance growth of phytoplankton, which are the very small plants that are, that are suspended in the water column. So by increasing the biomass or the, the, the amount of algae in the seagrass bed and by increasing the amount of phytoplankton in the water, in the water column, the light to the surface of where the seagrasses are is reduced and they can no longer do sufficient amount of photosynthesis to support their growth. So in this way, both sediments and nutrients are bad for seagrass habitats. Seagrasses are also sensitive to climate change or to factors associated with climate change. There have been observed losses of seagrasses due to increased temperatures in various parts of the world. There are also potential losses with, seagra with uh, sea level rise as areas as seagrass in deeper habitats can no longer persist. Elevated carbon dioxide levels may in fact increase production in seagrass beds, although the science around the influence of elevated CO2 on seagrasses is still very young and we're yet to come to very firm conclusions about what its effect might be. So here's a small animation of how we might expect seagrasses to respond to increases in sea level. We have currently in this slide the mangroves upslope and the seagrasses in the subtidal area of this landscape. But as sea level rises, the mangroves die and move upstream, as do the seagrasses. So in this way, we may actually see quite large changes in the distribution of seagrasses with sea level rise. Now finally, I just want to have one word or one slide that's devoted to conservation. Now, from our knowledge of what is bad for seagrasses, increased turbidity of water, which decreases light to the sea floor, then it's obvious that what we need to do is manage the inputs from land. Because these are the things that are reducing the light level to the seagrass on the sea floor. So management of both nutrient and sediment inputs is extremely important, as well as limiting direct damage, for example, by dredging. I also want to point you to the organisation that's called Seagrass Watch. Now this organisation has been monitoring the state of seagrass beds in locations where there are keen volunteers to do so. And I point you to their website if you'd like to go and have a look at the fabulous work they're doing to monitor the responses of seagrasses to changes in environmental conditions. 
Finally, we don't have much time to talk about restoration, but what I want to say to you is that restoration of seagrass beds is extremely difficult and expensive to do. And this is because if you want seagrass to grow in a place where it has been eliminated, basically you have to change the conditions back to one that will support their growth. And that means reducing the turbidity of the water. And if we follow that through, that means managing the land-based inputs into the system. So restoration is something that can be done, but it takes a lot of effort. And I think what we can uh, conclude from this is that basically preventing seagrass losses is really the best thing to do.